All right, so today what we're going to be talking about is the Advanced Assembly Extension, or AAX as it's known, inside of Pro Engineer and, as we're looking at today, Creo Parametric. So this is one of the better selling extensions inside of Creo, and there's a really good reason for it. It does a lot of good things with large assembly management. Um, being able to do things like top-down design, being able to manage performance of your computer a little bit better, and then also assembly configurations, being able to do that. So those are three topics that we're going to look at today uh, real quick. So first one we're going to talk about is top-down design. Top-down design is really a theory more than anything, but the idea behind it is looking at the finished product or the finished top-level assembly first and then driving all of your sub-assemblies and components off of that. The idea is if you have that concept or the um, finished product in the back of your mind, you're going to create sub-assemblies and parts that are going to fit together much better. So one of the ways that advanced assembly gives you a, a better um, tool set for top-down design is skeleton models. So case in point, what we're looking at right now is a powertrain assembly from a car. So when someone goes to design this, they don't have a really good understanding of all the individual components. But what they do have a good understanding of is baseline features or functionality. Things like locations, keep out areas, and that type of thing. So when you start this design, what you can do is you can lay out a skeleton model. A skeleton model is going to be just kind of the skeleton of the design. So like I was talking, you know, maybe you have an idea of the location of the back of the engine or the front of the engine. Maybe you have a better understanding of where you know, the uh, intake is going to be or just a generalized sketch of the engine itself, the center line, the axis of where the uh, drivetrain is going to be, and then just some surfaces for keep out areas. These are all things that you can create with a skeleton model. So again, axes, datum planes, coordinate systems, uh, a number of different things. But what you can do is you can lay out your design with base level concepts and ideas. Then the individual teams that are going to work on the design, whether they're working on the engine, the transmission, uh, the drive shaft, the intake manifold, they can take the information that they need off of this skeleton, design around it, and then they're assured that it's going to come together properly. The other great thing about a skeleton is if everyone drives their individual sub-assemblies and components off of it, when you go to update that design, you, all you have to do is go into the skeleton and update that. So let's say we had to stretch the powertrain 5 to 10 inches. We could just go ahead and stretch the skeleton, and then if everyone's based their design off of it, it should update without an issue. Another area of advanced assembly that is widely used is copy geometry. Copy geometry is used in a number of different areas for a number of different reasons, but one that we're going to talk about today is performance management. When you're working on a large assembly, you have it inside your session of Creo Parametric, it's typically going to slow your session down. Unless you have a supercomputer, um, it's going to lag the system a little bit. So would it be great to be able to take references off of what you need from that assembly, use it in your sub-assembly or your part, and not have to have that, that top-level assembly open? That's what copy geometry can do. You can also free up that assembly. So if you're not working in an area that has data management, you can copy the information you need, close that assembly so someone else can work on it. So let's say I wanted to copy some information from this engine here. What I can do is I can start a new part. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and copy the information I need into the design. So I'm just going to go ahead and find that engine that we were working on, open it up. And now what I can do is I can make references off of it. I can reference it in three different ways. I could either do it with surfaces, a chain, or you know a sketch. And then also references themselves, so datum planes, axes, coordinate systems. So we're just going to use surfaces. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to reference this top surface here and a couple of the inner surfaces on the uh, end of the engine. So now what I can do is I can go ahead and hit OK, and you're going to see it's pulled that information into my session. You can see inside the model tree we have an external copy here. So what I can do now is I can start modeling around this. If I go ahead and base the design that I'm working on off of, let's just say, the uh, bolt pattern here. If someone changes that bolt pattern on the part that it's based off of or in the assembly level, it's going to update my design. So again, that associativity, and I didn't have to have that assembly open once I copied this information. I can close it out, let someone else use it, or just get the performance gain from my computer not having that assembly open. 
The last thing we're going to talk about is um, assembly configuration. So a lot of a lot of people out there are designing products that are you know kind of like a family of products. So you know a case in point, looking at a trailer, the overall idea of the trailer is going to be the same. It's just going to be things like the the length, the width, maybe the number of stalls in this case, the number of axles, if there's a door on one side or not. Those are the types of things that are going to change. So what advanced assembly gives you the capability to do is create a layout for this design that's going to control those features. So if I jump over to the layout, you're going to go ahead and see a real simple sketch of this trailer. Now what I can do is I can go in and change this information without even having to know how the parametric system works. I can just go ahead, type in 86 here for the width, and maybe there's only going to be three stalls. And then finally, I can jump over to another sheet and say, you know what, I do want a door on that side. What I can do then is I can go back over to the assembly, regenerate, and you're going to see that the model is going to update based on those values. So again, very easy way to configure your product. You can see that it's shorter, only has three stalls, it's narrower, there's two axles instead of three, and if we spin it around here, we've now added a door. So again, just very quickly, what we've covered is top-down design, performance management, and assembly configuration inside of AAX, or the advanced assembly extension, inside of Creo Parametric. Thank you, and have a good day.